the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. My name's Chris S. Hanna. This hey. is my nine foot homemade oak bar here in my basement in Evergreen Park, and it is the EP Podcast brought to you proudly by. The First National Bank of Evergreen Park. You need a bank you can rely on and one that knows your community. Plus, First National Bank of Evergreen Park, Hannah, has this incredible setup where you never pay a fee on an ATM. That's amazing. Some banks say that, but they don't really mean it. So what they do is, let's say that you're, and I've challenged them on this before, Mm -hmm. when they're on the show or even when I'm in their place over there at 95th and Pulaski, I've challenged them on this. I've been like, what if I walk into a disreputable place with a $10 charge (laughs) on my credit card? That's that's the best way for me to say it, right? (laughs) I'm at a bachelor party and I walk into a kind of place that like, I don't want my wife to know I walked into, right? And it's $10 to get money out of the machine. Right. Right? Like, Will you pay the 10 bucks back? And they're like, yep, any fee. Really? I'm like, that's crazy. That's crazy. See, some to places me. say it, but they really don't. So it's good to know that they actually do that. Charge hits and then they just pay it right back. Huh. Which I think is really super cool. It's there. It's available to you. It's definitely something to check out. They've got accounts for the kids. Uh, they've got great rates on CDs right now 4%, 4.25, depending on how long you're keeping the CD for. So get over there and check them out or visit bankevergreenpark.com. I want a good date story later on because so many people reacted to your bad date story. (laughs) I've I've had so many bad ones, so it's good to have a good one. Well, we're going to get to it later on because I got such a reaction to what you talked about last week. A lot of women telling me that, one, they thought it was, like, funny, but also, like, they were upset for you. Like, they wanted to hunt (laughs) this guy down in the streets. As if, he, as if he was a, a monster in a movie. Oh, like, Lord. That's the reaction. Like, they're ready to fight for you, which is fight, nice. Fight, But we need to give a positive one this yes, week. Yes, okay? we need a good one. On Thursday the 19th, Mayor Kelly Burke sat in front of a crowd, or actually probably stood up in front of the crowd. That's what they do when they give speeches, and gave the State of the Village address. Many of you probably missed it. I don't know what the crowd was like, but I figured we should bring her on the EP podcast just to kind of figure out what is the State of the Village. Mayor Burke is on the line with us right now. How are you? I'm excellent, Chris. How about you? Good. Was it a big crowd, like raucous, uh, handing out programs? What was it like? <laughs> it was a strong crowd. Um, it was a lunch crowd. You know, there's a uh, this uh, Office of C- Citizen Services does a regular senior lunch. They do it every month. And this was the feature for that month. So it was, I would say, mostly the uh, senior crowd, but there were a couple younger folks sprinkled in there. So it was like lunch and the show. All right. Well, what is the state of the village? Uh, I mean, how did you sum it up for everybody? Short answer, the state of the village is really good. Obviously, we're always looking to see where we can improve, and we're going to continue on that in 2023. But overall, um, we just passed our um, village appropriation ordinance, which is a fancy term for our budget. We ended last year with uh, a little bit of a balance in our favor, and we are anticipating that revenues are still going to be strong next year. We're going to be able to, you know, fulfill everything we need to fulfill and do some infrastructure projects and still have a balanced budget. So um, it's good. We've got, you know, a strong business community. The retail, our retail sector has done pretty well. You know, we've had strong sales tax. So things are, things are pretty good. We approved last year, 35 business licenses. Um, Probably the biggest additions to those were the Chili's. Uh, at 95th and Western, and then the Macy's backstage and market by Macy's. We hope to see the Subaru dealership coming online later on this summer. And then a little bit smaller, but um, things that people have been asking about or looking for, we're hoping to see the opening of the new wine bar, Spoken Vine, at 95th and Kedzie later on this winter. And then a coffee shop, Big B Coffee, which is a smaller chain that is I think mostly prevalent in Michigan, maybe a little bit in Indiana, is opening in that same area as well. So I know, just like your predecessor, you you go out and recruit, which is great for Evergreen Park. You do. We just had on here in December uh, Chef Max Musto. Oh, Max. Yeah. and I've been working, working, Max. I only found him because of your Instagram post about herbivore. And then he was just on Southside Pod, one of the other podcasts here on the network, where I went down and tried it. I'd never had vegan food before, and I told him when I was done, I was like, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell the difference. I was having a cheeseburger. I, I, 
He amazed me with it. And I asked him, I was like, has, has the mayor of Evergreen Park talked to you? He's like, yes, we have talked. Is that still an active thing for you where you're going around, you're finding interesting places, things that you think the people in the village would want and trying to bring that business in the EP? Yes. And um, so uh, along the lines of the food, you know, the restaurant, uh, kind, kind of like hospitality things that people have been asking about, you know, a brewery, um, a, a nicer sit down restaurant, things like that. So I've, I've learned a lot during the past couple of years. And one of the things that I found is it, it's hard to start your first business in terms of the financing. So we've had numerous folks come in with some great concepts and great ideas, and it's just been really hard for them to get financing, to get this going. And so my thought has kind of turned to, you know, I've noticed it's easier for places with a successful first location to then open a second location. And so I'm kind of putting this out there to uh, residents. You know, what places do you go to, you know, that aren't in our immediate area, but that you think would do well here? You know, and this could be, you know, anything from a brewery you've been to, to, you know, a, a really good restaurant pub, then we can go and present our case to those folks. Hey, are you thinking about expanding? We think you would do really well in Evergreen Park. We've got these three locations that we think would be great for you. Do you want to come and see it? Can we show it to you? Et cetera. So um, in 2023, that's where I'm thinking about taking the direction because it's, and not that I would give up on anybody who's trying to start something. Of course, we'd be willing to talk. It's just, it seems like it's really difficult to get those off the ground. And it's a good test market is what I've been told in my journeys, all these businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Macy's, that's like a new concept for them, but it makes sense for its location, the demographics of Evergreen Park and the surrounding area. There's been other businesses that have moved over in that part of EP and also in the entire community who have mentioned to me, this is a great market to figure out if I'm going to expand, is it possible? Like they're going to find out right away with the second location, can they do 10 of them? Exactly. So ever, anyone who has a suggestion about a place they love that they think would be a good fit, um, you know, we don't want to take anything from any place else. But if you're thinking about a second location, you know, we'd love to talk to you. So my email, kburke at evpkadm.org. Feel free to send your suggestions or just give a call up to Village Hall. And it's probably a good idea to do that because I notice even though the village is doing far more social media, and I got to commend you with that, there's far more getting out about what's going on in the village on all the different social media apps and the emails that get sent out. There's a lot of communication. I know that was something that you spoke about even before you were elected and then you focused on early on, but I doubt that that means you guys are cruising through Evergreen Park Facebook groups and looking at conversations, right? Because that would drive you mad, like, I mean, is, is there like, is there sometimes a monitoring of that? Like if you see like a group and all of a sudden there's like 50 comments on a problem in the EP or is it, is it something that you just don't see? So it's more important that people reach out to you. I, I personally, you know, that's not something I do, but um, certainly, you know, our, our staff will take a look because a lot of times people will complain about speeding. You know, we'll then take a look at those locations and, uh, you know, see if we need to address it. So um, yeah, there is some looking at all those different uh, all those different groups as well. But it'd be better if they, it'd be better if somebody contacted me directly. It'd be <laughs> certainly get to me faster. I, you know that is the benefit of this village. I mean, try to get a hold of the Chicago's mayor on the phone. I don't think that you can pull that off. It is nice to be in this little area where they can get a hold of you. You you bring up the 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 speeding thing and traffic, and that's always something that we hear about here as well. I remember that maybe. A year ago, you were on the show, but you've been on more than that in the, in the last year. But I know that you brought up something that you were trying different initiatives. You had picked a couple different spots around the village. You were trying different things for traffic patterns and trying to reduce speeding. Was there anything that stuck out in those tests that you guys really liked? We did uh, one particular test um, at on uh, 91st Street near Northwest School in Duffy Park, where we um, put in these temporary I think they call them diverters, but they're basically like little uh, sticks that are in the road and they they narrow the roadway so that people naturally slow down because they're coming from a wider roadway into a narrower roadway. And we did that over the summer where we started the channeling just east of the, the school and then ran it through um, the park. And that seemed like that was a pretty successful way to uh, – 
you know, kind of engineer people to slow down. And so we're going to talk about whether we should reinstate that next summer and whether we should do it again, temporary or do it permanent. There's some, you know, issues with plows and stuff like that that might impede it from being done on a permanent basis, but we're um, looking through that. And then we did purchase additional speed wagons, um, you know, those radar speed wagons that can go to different locations throughout the village. And, um, you know, I think that we found over the years that having that reminder, you know, hey, you're, you're, you're going, you know, 30 and it's a 20 really does make m- many people slow down. Not everybody, of course. But then we took that idea and ended up uh, looking at stationary solar powered speed signs that we can put, you know, at permanent locations. And we got a grant from AAA through, you know, God bless Sarah Klein, the former chamber president who's uh, the the manager at the Evergreen AAA and also a village resident. And she was instrumental in helping us get this um, grant through AAA. And we've been able to purchase six of these solar signs. We don't, we don't have them yet. We'll be putting them up, but, you know, kind of focusing on the schools and the parks and really another reminder for people to slow the heck down. Oh, those really do work. My little guy in the back seat yells at me. He goes, Dad, it's bleaking. It's bleaking, Dad. Like, I mean, he's the one who sees it because I'm the one who's not paying attention. But you're right. They are effective. Right. That's a it's a great thing. The mayor of Evergreen Park brought to you today on the EP podcast by the law offices of Parente and Norum. When you've been injured, you need a team that will do what it takes to fight for your rights. Insurance companies only care about one thing, the bottom line. Law offices of Parente and Norum, their team has the experience, dedication, proven results it takes to get you the care and compensation you deserve. They have recovered over $425 million so far for injured clients and their loved ones for a free case evaluation. EP Podcast listeners, call or text them today, 312 641 5926 or visit pninjurylaw.com. So I noticed on Facebook the other day, and this is the thing that always blows up, is whenever there's a crime, even if it's not in Evergreen Park, something happens in Oak Lawn, something happens on the Chicago side that's that's close to us, people react to it here in the EP. How how are things going right now with the police department? I talked with trustee Mark Marzullo about the new camera system. It sounded excellent to me. I completely understood how it worked and in, in trying to figure out like what happens when somebody comes in from outside and then tries to escape back out. You guys are getting a look at those at those license plates and it's easier for you guys to fight crime. Uh, how is that going right now overall in the village? Is crime up? Is crime down? What does it look like? So, I mean, things are going real well. So I'll, I'll just start with, you know, kind of reinforcing that flock um, license plate reader system that you were discussing, which is something we brought on in 2022. And that has been really helpful in, um, first of all, helping locate stolen vehicles, because uh, when a vehicle is stolen, the license plate gets put through a system that gets broadcast to all the law enforcement agencies, and then it's connected with this flock. So the uh, patrolling officers will get a notice that there's a stolen car in a certain location and then they can look for it. And they've been able to recover a fair amount. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but a fair amount of stolen vehicles. So it's helpful in that way. Also helpful um, vehicles, you know, that have been involved in something, you know, somebody gives a description, a partial license plate, they're able to put it into this flock system and then they can get a hit when it you know, goes through other parts of town where it runs into a flat camera. So it's been really helpful on two fronts. And then on our, um, just our, you know, we've got a great police department. I think there's a lot of mutual respect. The the officers certainly respect and value our residents and our visitors. And I think our community really rallies behind, um, behind our, our public safety. It's been challenging. You know, you may know this from, you know, maybe your friends who are still at the sheriff's office, but it's just been hard to recruit, especially younger people into all sorts of law enforcement type jobs. So what we did, um, we did a couple things this year. One was, this was a suggestion from our officers themselves to move to a 12 hour shift instead of, so two 12 hour shifts each day instead of three, eight hour shifts. And um, it took a lot of figuring out how that was all going to work, not only, you know, scheduling and logistics, but also, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, you weren't going to run into a whole bunch of overtime and things like that. And uh, we put it in as a a trial last year, and it's been very, very successful. Um, We've 
been able to, you know, maintain the police coverage and the amount of folks we need on the street at the same time giving to people who, you know, are doing these night and day shifts a better quality of life, more time with their family, um, and kind of a more stable environment. So that's been great. And then we've also opened our police department hiring up to lateral transfers, which is basically someone who would work, who has worked for a different police department. Um, you know, if you have under a certain number of years, they could apply and go through an application process to come on to um, Evergreen. So we just actually had our first lateral, who's a transfer from um, Chicago Police Department. He started this week and we are, you know, considering at least one more. That's a really good idea. I'm going to tell you something right now. You mentioned it. I worked in a 911 center for 10 years. I was a dispatcher, dispatch supervisor in inside Cook County Sheriff's Police. And the 12 hour shifts, first of all, if people are saying like, oh, my goodness, I would never work 12 hours. You get into a mode when you're doing that job that's very hard to come out of. So even right. when you get off of work, you're really not yourself. And sometimes you're just trying to avoid everybody in your house. If you could just do it all in one shot, like wake up get it out of the way, and they just go home and go to bed, that is so much healthier, I think, for them. It was something I always wanted for where I was at because it gives them a couple extra days off where they get to be completely normal with their families because it's a high-impact, high-intensity job. So I think that's awesome. And then the lateral transfer idea, you wait for the person that's right. And somebody might want to leave because they're, they're not a very good employee, so you still have to vet, but you're going to get some experienced officers on the street pretty quickly with that. Yeah, and, and you know, I think we're also just having to um – you yeah, look at look at the way we've recruited um, folks for law enforcement before and, you know, maybe change it up. So to that end, we've got um, two of our uh, uh, officers at uh, Moraine Valley. I think it's on the 25th. It's a, there's a municipal hiring fair at Moraine Valley. So um, anybody anybody in the audience who's looking for a job or looking for a career change, there's going to be a whole bunch of different um, towns there with all sorts of different openings, but our police department is going to be there and talk about, you know, and, you know, meet people and talk about, you know, what a great job it is and the benefits and, you know, just what a, a rewarding career it can be and, and kind of talk it through in a person to person um, way that I don't think they've done before. So we're going to give that a try too. Mayor Kelly Burke on the line with us. One more question for you, uh, Mayor. I just, mm -hmm. I just, uh, I thought it was funny. Last week I had Lorraine Swanson on from the patch. And the question mm -hmm. that I asked her was, uh, there's a trustee race in Evergreen Park. And after a couple years ago, when there were a lot of candidates, there's none. It's three running unopposed. And so she said, and I thought it was funny when she said it, maybe everybody in Evergreen Park is just really happy. Is that is that how you guys view it when you see two years after an election? Like there there's three unopposed running in the trustee race. Are people content? Well, you know, we I work really hard. The trustees work really hard to make Evergreen Park a great place where you want to live, work, and raise your family. United Homeowners, you know, which is the, the slate that we all have run on, have a history of, you know, of decades of really providing stable, non-dramatic leadership in government and, and sound government with, you know, a good financial basis in this town. And uh, I think we've, you know, uh, continued that through the first two years of um, my term. And so I'm taking it that people are, are in general happy with the job we're doing. Like I said, there's always room for improvement and I'm always open to suggestion, but um, I think we have really, you know, the, the, obviously, you know, the folks like Mark Marzullo and Jim McQuillan who've been around for a while have put in the work, but um, you know, Jeannie Olson, um, our new trustee and myself have really worked hard to um, not only keep this a great village, but make it better. Mayor Kelly Burke with uh, some insight on the state of the village for all of you who missed the speech last Thursday. And uh, Mayor, I really appreciate you jumping on the EP podcast. Well, thanks, Chris. And take care. And I'm so glad to hear Hannah back. Yo, you know what? I told her like when she came back, I was like, you know, who ask about you all the time is the mayor. <laughs> she, that's yeah, like, but, I was like, that's who asks about you all the time. She's like, where's Hannah? We've gotten so many people that are so excited she's back, and I'm happy she's back, too. Well, and I think you should let her tell a story about her new job, because it sounds like she might be having more success in her new job than she is on the dating front. So <laughs> <laughs> you let, let her tell an upbeat story about work. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand 
and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial Representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708-425-1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. So the mayor thinks we should do a story about your job so we don't have another bad date story, but we did promise at the beginning of the show, Hannah, we were going to do a good date story this week, and we have a sponsor, so we're going to go with the date story, because already your dating stories have generated such a buzz on the EP podcast. So you can spice up your dates and your food with Sid Sauce. They're bottled here in Evergreen Park because the peppers are grown here in Evergreen Park. The sauce is developed here in Evergreen Park, and they are delivered to EP residents in the surrounding area for free, right to your door. See every sauce they have to offer. The only sauces used here in this house come from SidSauce.net. Yeah, good date. Um, So been on a string of bad dates, went on a date. Um, Perfect gentleman, went to, you know, my typical first date location, open outcry. <laughs> John would love that. <laughs> John loves that. It's really, I mean, seriously. That's where I make them take this. Like, you have to meet me there. Is it because you liked that place beforehand? Is it I because liked it of the... beforehand, and I, I I know people there. You just feel safe. I don't know. Safety's really... Is I it the layout, too? I like the layout. You know, sometimes we'll sit at the bar. Well, there's a back door you can run out of. There is a back door like, that's I can the thing. run like, out There's of. a clear-cut back door, because there's a back parking lot, and then there's the street. So... There's multiple exits for escape. That's why I figured that you're into that place. I was there with a guy one time and he went to the bathroom and he came back. He goes, oh, God, you didn't leave. Good. (laughs) I'm like, no, I didn't leave. I'm still here. That's got to still be annoying to you. Because I I know that when I was in the dating scene eons ago, right? I think the last time it was eons ago. The last time I went on a date with somebody other than my wife was pre 9-11. Yeah. Like, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. Girls don't like guys without confidence. So when he came out and said that, that yeah. guy, you're probably like, and hey, I'm done with you. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm here. I'm not running away from you. This is not, not the guy I'm talking about tonight, but that was just like a funny side story. Okay. So. Guy you were talking about this time. Perfect gentleman. Oh, my gosh. Just pulled the chair out for me. Like when we got there and just kind to talk to and fun to talk to. Good conversation. He's a cop, has a real interesting career, you know, what he does with CPD and everything about him. I love how you're being coy with what this guy does. When the last guy, I had to edit the show because you gave away exactly where he worked. I'm like, people are going to know who he is. Like, you oh, wanted yeah. people to know. You're like, I was like, we can't give away all this information about this guy. Right. Okay, well, they they got to know where you, to go with this, the pitchforks. This one, you, <laughs> this one you like, so you're trying to hide everything that he does. I think it's really funny. You're being very vague. Be, yeah, being very vague. Yeah, okay. But he's, he's CPD. He's a cop. Such a gentleman. Interesting to talk to. I had such a great time. I think they were, we were there for like close to three hours. It was amazing. Very handsome man. Walked me out to my car, opened my car door for me and everything, made sure I got home safely. He's 26 years old. Dude, that's a problem for you, huh? He's 26 years old. I'm almost 40. <laughs> did you know that when you went on the I, date? I did. I did. So why did you go on the date if it was a problem? Because he was a very handsome young guy. So he was cute enough to go out with on the first date? Yes. We did, would have, we, did, yes. Did you still keep Hannah's rules on that one? What do you mean Hannah's, Hannah's rules? Hannah's rules was the most I do is I kiss at the end of the date. Oh, yeah, we got it. Yes, we kissed. Yeah, but that was the end. That, that's that was it. The, that's that the was limit. the end of it. You yeah. still had Hannah's rules. Yes, yeah, still had, so the still most had Hannah's were, rules. So your, your concern about his age. I don't know why that was so, so weird to me. Was it, was it hard for you to have a conversation no, with him? No, not at all. So why not did you date all. him anymore? I, I I would love to go on another date with him. Yeah. He was such a nice guy. Right. I would love to go on another date with him. All right. So it, the, it's still possible for you. Yes, it's still possible. Okay. Very, very, very nice. Very handsome. Very polite. Does it make you feel weird to be older? It does make do you me start feel doing weird. The thing, do you start doing the thing that's like, you know, when he was three years old, I was in college? Like, is I, it kind of like I that stuff? I think about that kind of stuff. You know, like I would tell, like if I were to start telling a story about when I was in college, I'm like, oh my God, he was probably like, you, you were know, a baby. You were a baby. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Right. That's weird. You know, I you mean, know? I'm thinking about this now. But, I mean, then, but it's different. But since like, but a younger woman has no problem dating an older man. So I don't know why. Well, look at Britney Spears. She's what, 40 and married to a 20 something. Yeah, she doesn't care. But yeah, but she's crazy. She's nuts though, but she doesn't doesn't care. No, she doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, look, I, 
I don't know. I was never in that situation where I, I was going to date somebody that was super like that was older than me. I'm not calling you super older than me, well, Hannah, but the, like right, if I was in, right. if I was it's 26, over a decade. if I was 26 years old, I don't think I would have been opposed to dating somebody that was in their 40s. I also, or even in their late 30s. I think I wouldn't get super serious with them. Right. Because once you start doing that, you're thinking to yourself, well, I might get married one day. That's a big difference. Yeah. One day they're going to be 60 and I'm going to be 40. That's yeah. a big difference. Like those That's are huge. the things that would run through my head. But he looks older. He doesn't look, he is, doesn't look like a 20 something. He right. looks older. He's mature. He acts older. But still, I can't get past can't it. Can't get past it. Can't get past that. I don't know why. I mean, I, it, what, it I mean such it's a good not date. a maturity level thing, is it? Because I would imagine you do a job mature. as intense as what he does. Yeah. He can have a riveting conversation with you. Oh, oh, very. Right? Very, very. And and, and he's he's more he's grown up quicker is what he I has, would think. Yeah. Right? I mean, like it depends on where you're at. I mean, there are there are thirty year old guys that still live in their parents' basement. Oh yeah. Yeah. I met one last week. Okay. Which I was <laughs> Guy actually looks at me and I was talking to him and I, I asked him if he had kids in my kid's school. And he's like, no, I'm only 30 and still live with my parents. And I was like, I had two kids by the time I was 30. You were. So that still exists out there. I get it. But this is a guy who's out there like, you know, in the thick of the world. Yes, he is. So yeah. that wasn't the thing. So in reality, it's just you looking at the long term. It's me looking at the long term. Yes. At the long term. Yes. Right. So, yeah, leave it up to me. Perfectly nice gentleman. Very handsome, but way younger than me. And I'm like, ah. Dating but, sucks. But you would have another date with him. I would definitely have another date You would date go with out him. and you would try it again. I would. And and then just later on have to deal with the thing that you already know is a problem. But you know what's weird? It's like I might be closer in age to his parents than I am. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the awkward that's conversation. The, that's the weird The part. awkward conversation would be after a couple of glasses of wine, the three of you, his parents and you looking at him going, you don't know. That you was before know. your time. <laughs> I think that would be when he left you. <laughs> Let's wrap up this episode with your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to give you an alternative. Full Taster Bar, great CBD products, brand new location, 95th and Kedzie, Northeast Corner. These are the same folks opening up Barrel and Vine. You heard the mayor talking about that as one of the new businesses coming this year to the EP. Barrel and Vine's going to be right next to Cool Clouds. Circle 95th and Kedzie is happening right now. Evergreen Park's Flake Fest is back on Saturday, February the 4th. Get ready to head out to Daniel Capuano Ice Rink, Yukich Field, 89th and Kedzie. Should be a great event. Baracos is going to be there with the food truck, that big one that they got. I think they debuted that at Papa Hops. I think that was the first time I saw that back in the summer. Starting at 11.30 a.m., Artie Kerr giving a free hockey clinic. It's an hour long and Artie knows his stuff. He taught my guy how to skate. 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. after that, free open skate. More information, contact the EP Rec Department, 708-229-3373. Later on in February, there's going to be a four-on-four hockey tournament on that outdoor rink. $500 a team, ages 21 and over. You're guaranteed at least three games. If you need more information right now, reach out to Mike, 708-703-1322, or wait until next week's episode of the EP Podcast. Those in charge of the tournament will be down here at the 9-Foot Homemade Oak Bar telling us all about it. The EP Youth Department wants to remind all students, grades 5 through 12, you are invited to join them at the Youth Center every weekday afternoon, 3 to 6 p.m. Variety of games to play, grab a snack after school, hang out with other kids. On Wednesdays, they also throw in bingo, a dollar a card for those kids from 4 to 5 p.m. Evergreen Park School District 124 is hiring if... You want to apply for a job as a math teacher, grade 8, science, grade 7 or 8, special ed, ESL, school psychologist, paraprofessionals, extended day lunchroom food server. Wow, they got a lot of openings. Lunch, recess supervisors, all of that. Go to d124.org and start the process. I'm going to start the process of working on the next episode of the EP podcast. Got a real estate expert already scheduled to come in. Going to talk to the folks behind that hockey tournament. Remember to subscribe, and if you've missed an episode, you can get it on demand anywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. 
Look at all those people in this great suburb driving down 95th and Ked Z. What a great place. It's called Evergreen Park, but we know it better as the EP. We're known for more than just the Unabomber. Remember Ted Kaczynski? You guys might even remember that big old rooster on 95th Street. It's all part of EP's history. So listen up to the EP podcast. You might be asking why. Because we talk about all things and we celebrate all the great things in the 60805. It's the EP podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP podcast. Evergreen Park. <laughs>